when you talk about quality, and we've talked about kind of your automation side of things, being able to reduce costs. We've talked about lean manufacturing, Six Sigma, 5S, whatever it is that those companies out there are going with. The answer may seem obvious of what I'm gonna ask you next about how you're addressing the workforce pinch, right? Every company I believe right now is, is feeling that labor shortage or skills gap. <laughs> yeah, we're all fighting that battle right, right now, right? Whatever we decide to call it, it's very similar at the end of the day. How do you guys adjust or adapt to what we're calling a workforce pinch or a labor shortage. Yeah, so uh, one of the fantastic things about um, coming down here, moving to a new facility, is you, know, you got a clean slate on mentality, right? And uh, uh, one of the things I, I spoke about before is about manufacturing. And you know, speaking about productivity being over 100%, I know it seems made up, but it's true. Uh, we, uh, you know, we started off here with one shift, then we added second shift, now we're adding third shift. Uh, the time between shifts, nobody's here. Uh, you need parts still, right? So we figured out how to do lights out. That was a learning challenge, but we got there and we we're getting even better at it every day. Um, so that's one of the ways we're at it. Uh, but to be able to do lights out, we need the other automation that I feel like people don't really consider automation. Um, and when you look at a machine, uh, you see typically there might be a bar feeder on there, chip conveyor, things like that. But you know, within the systems, there's uh, tool load monitoring, there's tool counting, there's surface footage measurement on cutting. You know, utilizing all those uh, uh, things that are already in the machine or pur purchased with the machine, leveraging that technology, because you shouldn't have a bar feeder if you're only going to run bar, one bar, right? Uh, bar feeders are meant so you can have continuous production and you can step away from the machine and keep producing. Um, I, I tend to stray away from, you know, the whole idea of uh, robots, right? Uh, you know, everybody loves a sexy robot, you know, uh, flinging parts around and all that, but I tend to see that as, uh, you know, you got to add that onto the machine where you already bought a machine that has a bar feeder and as long as your bar you know spindle capacity can fit uh, the bars that you have you got continuous production there um, anything outside of that we've actually found ways so uh, nakamura and methods helped us out with uh, they actually sell equipment that has integrated automation for built loading so you have a same size machine but you want to load something over you know two and a half inches uh, or one and a half inches or whatever size spindle your machine is you can get an automated billet loader on there um, allows us to still run, you know, on man or uh, what have you with uh, the automation equipment that's built into the machine. You don't have to mess around with wheeling over a robot and programming it and taking that long lead time to get another part into production where it might take a whole shift to set that up. You just lost a shift of production. I can't afford that. I don't know if anybody else can, but I would rather, uh, you know, just switch over to the next program, change out a sleeve, quick change uh, royal collet and uh, slap in the next material and get going. Um, so all that technology is right here with our machines, um, and then you know, pallet changing technology, things like that, instead of robotting, you know, stuff into place. It's all the technology is right there, and you can buy it straight from the manufacturer. Um, and it's made us, you know, hit new levels of productivity. And uh, with the labor uh, pinch right now, uh, it gives us capability and flexibility as well, right? So um, we're still able to meet our numbers, even if you know something happens in the labor market, we lose a few people, so on. Um, you know, you can have one person, we typically one man two, but we can do one man three machine or one man four if we got a good running job. They can tend and do the in-process checks for all that stuff, and it helps out, you know. So, um, you know, one person can then become two or three or four by leveraging the technology. And when you consider um, what I just said there and consider our old process where uh, to get that one part done, it took five operations. Well, there's if there's no one there to put that part into each operation, it doesn't get done, right? The machine just did all that. So compared to our old process, um, you know, with a eighth of the machines, we're producing the same amount of product at the end of the day. That's a pretty nice.